You can now purchase a spindle directly from Onefinity. It is right here and I've been using it in the shop. This means that you can purchase everything that you need to get your Onefinity CNC up and cutting at the same time, from the same place, and more importantly, the same support. Yes, Onefinity CNC now supports a spindle and this is it. Redline spindle kits are the industry's first and only safety certified plug and play spindle kits, guaranteeing exceptional quality, reliability, and safety for the end user. This model is a 1.5 kilowatt, 110 volt ER20 collet, 80 millimeter air cooled spindle. In the box, you'll get your spindle, you'll get a VFD, you'll get a control module with manual override that can be mounted to your Maso screen, as well as all the necessary cables, collet wrenches, and collets. Speaking of collets, this includes an eighth inch, quarter inch, 3 8 inch and half inch collet. The VFD is an all metal enclosure that is properly grounded, shielded, and filtered. The model shown here can plug directly into a 110 volt wall outlet, meaning that there is no special wiring required. The spindle uses four ceramic bearings that reduce rolling resistance, increase durability, stiffness, and minimize damage caused by cold starts. Right here you can see the difference between the CNC lab spindle and then the Redline spindle for Winfinity. Both of these have the exact same specifications, although the Redline spindle is significantly taller. Also at the end for comparison is the 220 volt spindle that I've had on my Winfinity for the last year. These are relatively the same size, although the Redline spindle is slightly taller. This old Makita router bit the dust back in 2022. You can see right here, <laughs> this nasty bull bit that was bent. It almost burned down my shop. But before all that happened, it served me very well for a very long time. If you want to know the differences between a router and a spindle, check out the video that will be linked down below. It's got a lot of great information that is very helpful if you're new to all of this. Today we're going to be using this to cut out this week's project so that we can customize last week's project. We're making a batching plate template that will snugly hold the male portion of our wall pocket hooks so that we can quickly customize the front with a pet name. The design right here is relatively simple and allows for four of them to be customized at the exact same time. This means that you can line up the text or graphics that you want to put on the hook directly in the file and only do the V-bit carving. To create this batching plate, we're going to be using one bit, the Downtown Jenny. As you can see here, I'm doing the complete opposite of Redline CNC's tagline, which is push your CNC to its limit. But the nice part is next week, I'm gonna show off how I put it through its paces with a multiple hour long carving. And I also did some pretty nasty cuts with some very surprising results. All those results are gonna be in my Alt Mill vs. Onefinity video, where I'm gonna be showing off this Redline spindle attached to the Onefinity, as well as CNC Labs spindle attached to the alt mill. First, we're gonna be cutting out the shelf that the main body of the wall pocket hook sits down into, and then we're gonna be creating an area clearance for the tenons to fit snugly together. Once I did this, I realized that the tenon pockets were too tight, and I came back and made those a little bit wider with a profile cut inside the vector. Removing just that small amount of material made all the difference in the world, and things fit exactly the way that they should. I cut this out of pine due to it already being an inch and a half thick, meaning that it was thick enough to be able to accept the wall pocket hook male portion. But if you're planning on making jigs and fixtures, I would stick to harder woods or even plastics. This ensures that there's no wood movement and it will really help the piece stay in place long term, especially if you're going to be using it daily. Also, as a design note, I've removed the bridge between these two mortise holes. This allows you to be able to position the male side of the wall pocket hook in top or bottom, depending on how you want to be able to create your carving. It's just a small little creature comfort, but when you see the files, there will be one large section that'll be open instead of two smaller ones. Speaking of files, these files are available in Carveco, Vectric, DXF, and SVG over on cncwithme.com. Next, I took one of my blanks and I placed it into the fixture. I created a V-bit carving on some text that I had placed into the fixture file and I started engraving. This is a very simple way of creating a fixture, but hopefully this sparks some creativity in how you can create a batching plate for the customization that you do in your shop. I've had a good amount of runtime behind this spindle, and I can say that it has been extremely reliable and powerful. Directly going from a 220 volt, 2.2 kilowatt spindle down to a 110 volt, 1.5 spindle, I haven't noticed any difference in all the work that I personally do. Obviously, more powerful spindles open doors to different toolpathing solutions and different materials, but I don't think the average person is actually going to see that much of a difference. There is a massive jump in production capabilities going from a Makita router to a spindle. So if you do have that in your budget, I would highly recommend the upgrade. 
but don't feel like you have to buy the most powerful option available just to see a difference. I personally have yet to have a more powerful spindle than a 2.2 kilowatt in the shop, and I hope to do some testing with some much more powerful spindles in the future. I'm extremely thankful that Winfinity sent me the spindle. I think it is a really great upgrade. And I'm incredibly excited that you can buy this direct from Winfinity and Redline CNC spindles are supported by Winfinity. This gives a ton of peace of mind in completing your purchase, making sure that your money is well spent. I know that there's a lot of options as far as being able to wire up your own spindle and figure things out yourself and you'll save a good amount of money. But for the average person, they just want to be able to purchase something and put it on their machine and have the peace of mind that things are going to work out. And if they don't, that they have somewhere to actually call and get some solutions. Believe me, you're going to run into issues at some point regardless of what brand CNC machine that you buy. So I would make sure that if you are purchasing a brand new system, purchase as many of those components in the same place as possible. If you haven't seen, Winfinity has been doing a product release week. This spindle announcement is just one of many. I'll have all of the releases linked down in the description of this video. Using those links for your purchase is a really great way to support the channel and I highly appreciate it if you did. Huge thanks to all of you CNC with me members. None of this would be possible without y'all. I hope that y'all know it and I hope that y'all are enjoying these videos. Lots of cool things are cooking up for 2025 and I'm excited to make all that information publicly available next week. Black Friday is my Alt Mill vs. Onefinity video, and I can say without any fanfare that results have been extremely unexpected, and I'm excited to show everybody. I hope that you tune in next Friday. Regardless, I hope that everybody has a wonderful Thanksgiving. Until then, I'll see you soon. Bye.